Hello everybody, welcome back to the Agostino Zynga Show with me, your host Agostino Zynga. This is episode number 228, that's 228, all right, I got my fingers all melted up there, but hope you guys are doing well, hydrated, rested in that malarkey, I'm doing amazing, as you can tell in this, with this HD camera setup and this weird pop mic that I've got here, so big up the commenter who said I should probably put a pop shield on my microphone because there's too many of so hopefully this helps with the popping sounds, but if it doesn't, you know, say that be. I've tried my best, so hang on there with me. But as you can see with the HD camera, I've got a new haircut, freshly done, just now from the barbers. It took all but of, what, two and a half hours to get it done anyway, you know? I've, I've been in a bit of a weird situation. I've been very, very um spoiled with the barbers I've been going to lately, right? I've been avoiding going to any kind of, you know, quote unquote traditional Caribbean or African barbershop just because I don't want the drama. The ones that are near me where I live in East London are, you know, for the most part quite um lax with their timekeeping to say the least, right? So I've been trying to move around, nim um, you know, jump around from barber to barber, try and find the perfect spot for me. But you know what always end up happening? I always end up going back to the source, going back to what I know better. What I know best, sorry. And what I know best is a really dodgy looking Caribbean or African barber shop with 17 guys in there. You're not sure who the barber is because there's only one guy cutting. Everyone else is sitting down talking about politics, drinking Guinness, right? You, it's just an absolute mess. It stinks like dudes in there. There's guys in the background somewhere shouting. There's If there's one girl that walks by there, it's like putting a bloody fish in a sea of piranhas, right? It's an absolute horror show. But they still manage to get trims like this out there, right? They still manage to cut your hair in this sort of fashion. It's amazing. It's amazing, honestly. Like, even this barber that I go to, the guy that cuts my hair there, he could not be more disinterested. He could, he could, his body language is like the opposite of somebody that wants to make money, right? <laughs> but somehow he manages to get this trim done. And you know what? He does it all with one razor, with one, um, with one flipping machine, right? For the most part, he does the edges with the little, you know, with a little wow clip of the grey one that everyone uses. But for the fades and stuff, he uses one machine, one machine, and just he just puts on, um, I don't know, like a, a two clipper or something or a three clipper, and that's it. That's how he does the fades with that machine and a bit and a couple of clippers, just like clipping, boom, 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 boom. He never brushes the side of your hair. You know, usually most places you go to there, they say brush the side of your hair, they line it up, they give you, you know, they kind of, you know, they give you a bit of a bowl cut and then from there they start fading. He doesn't do any of that shit. He just goes straight in there and just starts fading. And somehow, as you can see from the video, if you listen to the podcast app, it's going to be irrelevant, but my, my, my fade looks amazing. It's not Odell Beckham level, but it's the best I can do, you know, living in the area that I live in. But yeah, I'm... <laughs> What an incredible experience, man. I, I walked in at like, what, half seven? No, no, let me stop half seven. I walked in there at 6.50 and I left at half past eight. And I was the first person in the seat. Like, I, I when I walked in, the seat was free. Half past eight. Six, seven o'clock to half past eight. And not because the haircut took long, because they were just faffing around, isn't it? Like, going outside, popping out, getting a munch, getting a this, getting a that. It's like, God almighty, man. You'd think, like, you know... You want to just like I'll move the microphone a little bit so please bear with me. You'd think you just want to chill and wait to finish a shift and then go and do your stuff, but nah, not not these guys, not these guys at all. One second, let me move this around again. Let me go see if that works properly. This shield thing is a bit annoying, isn't it? It's not the easiest thing to do, but anyway, let's see. Hopefully, this works from now on. But yeah, hopefully, the sound improves. For those of you listening, let me know if the sound is better this way. Um, I'm using a pop shield. Hopefully, there's no more pop. But yeah, apart from that, what's been going on? Um, it's been nice. Life's been good. I've been training pretty well, running a lot. Running is going quite well. I'm enjoying get, hitting the streets again. Um, I need to get some new running shoes though. My shoes are literally on their last legs. I really want to get those new um, Nike Four Percenters that everyone's been talking about or that have been featured all over the interwebs. I'm sure you guys have seen me talk about them a few times here. The Nike Vapor, what are they called? Next Percent, something like that. Next Percent. Vapor, what is it? Vapor fly next something, right? Next percent. You know that new one that come out is that squishy soul, all fluorescent greeny. That's the one. Mama mia. Look at that. Alright, cool. Let's find this shoe, right? <laughs> so this is the shoe that I want to get, right? This one. Hope you guys can see it. It's on the screen now, it's loading up. This is from the Nike site. 
bloody hell. And I think it's like 230 quid, right? So probably the most, you know, luxurious of running shoes that, you know, if, if um, Mercedes made running shoes, they, these would be it, right? The fucking Tesla running shoes in that regard. Or, so yeah, they, they look amazing though, right? There's no way you can't not want these. I think they came out in limited quantities first to begin with. They see them out to loads of athletes, which is a really cool uh, way of doing stuff. They didn't give them to loads of influencers who don't actually run. They get, I'm sure some influencers got them, but for the most part, I saw a lot of actual runners giving them, which makes it be known to me that maybe the influencer or the energy marketing team at Nike isn't as cool as it seems, and they have different divisions. So they have somebody for like you know lifestyle pieces, somebody for sports specific stuff. Because you know, if I'm a I'm an actual runner, I actually run like you know 10, 50 miles a week. I don't actually want to. I don't care if this like cool hipster dude is wearing them i want to see cool hipster dude wearing cool hipster shoes right i don't want to i want to be influenced by yeah cool hipster dude should be wearing like you know sakai nike right he shouldn't be wearing these so i'm happy that they kind of been able to split it but that said i'm not i'm not against seeing a cool hipster dude wear these and make them look good in an outfit but for the most part i actually would like to ride in these because they look really comfortable um but yeah so these are nike uh nike zoom x vapor vapor fly nike next percent the worst name ever, right? I'm assuming every bit of the name is part of the technology, the Zoom X, the Vaporfly, the next percent. But Jesus Christ, man, figure out how to like name. That's one thing, Apple and Nike, right? They make amazing product, but they can't name shit for, they can't name items for shit, right? The other phone, the iPhone that came out the other day, the iPhone 11 Pro, like what? Max Pro stuff, it's like, what the fuck are these names, man? Just, I don't know, mix, mix them up. But anyway, this is, um. From the Nike site, it says here the Nike Zoom X Vapor Max <laughs> Vapor Fly Max next percent is the best. What is the far uh, is the fast you've never seen? What is the fast you've never seen or felt before? What kind of sensors is that? The Nike Zoom X Vapor Fly next percent is the fast you've never seen or felt before. By combining our most innovative technologies, Nike Zoom X foam and Vapor Weave material is the fastest shoe we've ever made scroll down to learn more about the future racing shoes so these are i think most of you guys are aware of like running styles but for or running shoes preferences but for the most part they do recommend you have one shoe to training and one shoe to run your race in quote unquote um i had a couple of pairs i did the same sort of thing for but you know as time progresses you end up trying to you end up wearing the same shit all the time your running shoes be, your training shoes become your race shoes race shoes become your training shoes but you should actually have them split so that when it comes to a race you've got something light comfortable on maybe with a bit more padding that you can actually go um really hard in and then you've got training shoes that you don't necessarily give a shit about but you can kind of get the mileage in there for the most part no actually that was the other way around you want something a little bit more chunky for your day-to-day -day. if you want to wear that if you want to wear a zero drop shoe you're more than welcome to but in your race day i would wear like a zero drop shoe you know like with no kind of elevation on the heel or the forefoot so then i'd be concerned on my gait or making sure my foot placement is where it should be and then i'll be set for the entire races but that's what you kind of want to do so i'm assuming it's by this this nike zoom x vaporfly next percent is the is the kind of the the perfect shoe for you to race in once you have got that race started and all that malarkey but they look incredible man look at that you got are you on track they look amazing look at that and the tread looks really nice I'm a real, I'm a big fan of these, and I actually like the fact that I've mentioned it in another post later on. But I like the fact that in the actual image of the website, they've got a pair that's actually been worn or been squished about, right? I like the fact they're not actually just always putting up pristine shoes online. It's a little touch for most people won't matter, but it looks like these have been worn a bit, or they've been tried on at least, or it's a pair that the model will and they just re relace them and put them up on the website, right? Took some obviously into some beautiful pictures, but. Because, you know, their shoes, you want, they want to be lived in. I don't want to see something that looks so sterile, doesn't have any life in it. I want to see it worn a bit, like given a bit of character. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, they look amazing. And if you click shop now, I'm pretty sure they're at 230. I might get them. I might get them when I get paid next month or the end of this month, probably. I probably might get them. They're 240. Oh, I probably won't get them. They haven't got my size. <laughs> so, yeah, my size isn't available, but I recommend you check them out. Uh, Nike Zoom X Vaporfly, next percent one of the best running shoes out there for me in my opinion personally i just i love them i'm again maybe they're gonna i'm surprised they haven't put any more colorways actually they've really stuck with this colorway for a long time usually nike tried to they put out one colorway and then they just flood the market with tons of them but they've kind of really stuck with this shoe in it this colorway they've not done anything else so far um which is quite a long maybe that's what they do with nike running shoes i'm not sure people someone else can probably in the comments let me know but 
I'm surprised that we haven't seen any more shoes from them or any other colorways of that particular model in the most part. But yeah, check it out if you're that way inclined. So let's get into the topic because that's what we're here for, right? So I'm mean, blabbering on about Nike shoes I'm never going to buy. Um, what do we want to talk about here? We've got tons of stuff to see here. A lot of stuff that I'm a fan of. Okay, number one, let's head over to Jason Dill. Jason Dill has launched... Um, no, it's just opened his first retail store, right? I think it's in, it's in LA, just on in Hollywood, I'm pretty sure, right? On one of those places. Um, fucking awesome is obviously going from strength to strength. Um, I see, you know, it's popular when you see a lot of like general everyday people wearing it, right? Uh, there was a couple of dudes I used to work with at work who probably didn't know that much about Jason Dill or didn't skate, but wore a lot of his stuff. I see people at Liverpool Sea Station, which is for me the, the, the mecca of like, you know, analyzing street style for the most you know general of all public so that's a good place to go spot it and i've just generally seen it you know sell out in certain places but he's stopped in more stores it seems like he's really making a lot of big moves with his brand uh fucking awesome and it's good to see because you know jason dill's always been one of my has been or is my favorite skater personalities in the skate world um as of late and often a long time ago ever since probably the Avon workshop days i've been a big fan of his uh for the simpsons all those, all those good malarkeys but um, it's just good to see him in a good space. I know he kind of went through a bit of, you know, some testing times lately, a couple of relapses here and there. And he's, you know, he's always an open book and always, you know, probably um, uncomfortably honest in his appraisal or his lack of appraisal for himself. So it's good to see he's in a good space, surrounded by young kids who I'm sure are giving him a new lease of life and just generally just doing what he knows how to do best in it, being creative and shit. So um, Hypey's put together a little video, it seems like, about his... Um, journey so far i haven't really watched it actually i haven't watched it at all so i want to watch it together with you guys i'm going to scroll through some bits and pieces and see what jason deal is doing and obviously if you guys listening via the podcast app i'll link the video in the show notes in the description again all and most topics i speak about especially if it's stuff that's really kind of you know poignant to what's going on right now or kind of interesting i will always copy and paste the links um in the description so if you listen via the podcast app, just click the whatever app you're using if you're using an iphone just click on the podcast itself on the description where I kind of write the topics, you'll see all the list of links there that you can click. But anyway, this is um, a video called How Jason Dill Put Together the Best Skate Team for Fucking Awesome via Hypebeast Diaries. Hypebeast are trying to launch a new series, Hypebeast Diaries. It's probably, you know, maybe short lived, not production values going into it, but it seems like. But anyway, let's get to the video. Boom. The only animal FA can be is human. <laughs> of course you said that to end it. I be doing right as human. It's a cool little title video actually. Well, how much credit control Jason to had in actually making some points together? Things when you're young to facilitate the inner raging stupid that yearns to get out, whether you or not you want it or not. You know, it's going to come out on your on, your, <laughs> on your head and a tattoo on your face. That raging stupid wants to get out. Luckily for me, that raging stupid was not there. You first come into of my studio. I Do you remember back in the day when he was really against not having his own brand, Jason? And then now look at him, man. It's amazing to see, man. I'm, I'm really proud. Um, in a weird way, I don't know him. I've never met him in my life. I passed him by when no, yeah, I saw him outside from when I was standing outside of the Supreme Store when the Supreme Store opened and he came down for the launch. I've never just one time seen him in my entire life, but. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's just cool to see. I remember he was really against the idea of having a brand. It made him uncomfortable, maybe because it was it would have made him accountable and he would have had people he's dependent and he couldn't, you know, end up getting wasted and stuff. But I'm happy for him, man. It's really fucking cool to see. you call it. But uh, uh, it's a place for me to do all this bullshit. Never done a hype beast interview, but I have cameras following me before. See if I can make this shot here. And I love that whenever, whatever pictures you see of Jason Dill from back in the day, even during Alien Workshop days, when that Malaki, like he's never ever had furniture in his apartments, never. 
never felt there's never i love him like he's just such a purebred artist or creative in that regard like always surrounded by newspaper clippings right it reminds me of like old like weirdo dave stuff um always you know his walls always plastered with like these weird paintings that to end up being stuff that he's just working on or stuff that might turn into pieces for his collection or just personal little stuff that he's doing just that kind of you know mental therapy work just i, lo I love it it's just never changed but then he's always dressed immaculately. He's always got cool haircuts. And I don't know, man. I don't know. I like him. And he supposedly has a penchant for the black women too, which is amazing. He's just so cool. We started at, in, in 2001, it, it wasn't like a streetwear market. Look at his outfit. He's got like a, for those who are listening, he's got like a burgundy or a or wine. Is that a corduroy? I think it's a, maybe it's like a, a massive cardigan, same uh, wine red pants, um, a kind of bowling shirt it looks like, and some shoes. He just looks so cool. He always looks cool. It really, it really, I don't even... He's the only guy that makes me want to smoke cigarettes, Jason Dill. He makes me want to smoke. I maybe some of the young kids want to smoke cigarettes because they see Lucas about smoking them, right? And they all smoke cigarettes in a really fashion way where they're just like <laughs> sucking it in and out. But if I really went to smoke cigarettes, my muse would be Jason Dill. Or like, you know, one of those Vogue Paris girls, right? The editorial team, like, I don't know, Emmanuel Alt or something, right? Those girls probably might want to make me smoke too. I don't even know if they're smoking anymore, but yeah. I mean, at work, I mean, I'm like streetwear, you know? To where, like, if you did know a brother, friend, you'd be kind of like, it was no business man. Shout out. Each other got covered. Yeah. Concept and everything. I mean, oh, nice. I didn't know. I actually didn't know that. I knew I knew it was a uh, Jason Dill's um, hand style, but I didn't. No, is it? I didn't. I didn't even know. Wow. Okay. Good. I didn't know that. Okay. Um, is that Dashna? But no, I'm very proud of that. Oh, no. very, very, very proud That's of awesome. That. Everything I make is for sale. Either. Like instantly, it's like make this a little board, make a no sweatshirt, make a no belt, hat, wallet, jacket, you know, t-shirt. I'm basically trying to make people smile. You know what I mean? Whatever mm. I do. And then also, it's like. You can do something that makes someone think like, oh, that's fucked up. And then they kind of laugh about it. That's good, too. I, I'll, I'll take that. See, now I want to drink Perrier water, smoke cigarettes, and paint on my walls. I can't paint in here, obviously, but, you know, that would be cool to do. <laughs> After seeing this video image, this is Jason Dill now painting on the wall, doing those cool sketches. Anyway, you know what? This is boring watching it along if you're just listening, but I'm going to link it in the show notes if you guys want to check it out. It's a really cool video. Um, it's about, what, eight minutes, or eight minutes long. If you're interested in Jason Dill, just interested to see what, this is probably what we're going to see with hip hop, isn't it, right? We're probably going to, hopefully we see more examples of this, like skaters growing old gracefully, right? They're not trying to hold on to their past. They're not, you know, flying down, you know, 20 sets and shit trying to keep up with the kids and stuff where they're just they're just progressing to these other kind of um what would you call it mentors in some some regard i know when i was younger the older the older skate dudes were just annoying right they were just not annoying they were fucking dicks right they'd vibe you out they wouldn't be friendly they'd just be complete assholes to you for no apparent reason because you just i don't know i guess you reminded them of when they were young right um, but as it seems as if nowadays the young, the older generation of skaters are a little bit more graceful in their exits or they seem as if, again, I'm not plugged into the forums. I don't know if there's like some crazy old guy at the moment that's like completely freaking out. But for the most part, they seem to be in their own little, they even have white, they even have older guy drama, right? That doesn't really exist. It's not, it's not really something to do with the young kids. It's not like they're fighting against the kids, right? They're fighting amongst each other, which is, you know, again, entertaining for the most part because they're all the dudes. Um... But yeah, it's cool to see, man. Hopefully we see that in hip-hop too. We see that the, the passing of the torch or the acceptance that the older dudes have got a particular audience and the youngies have young women. Because you hear a lot, I hear a lot of people say, you know, the common trope you hear uttered a lot. Oh, hip-hop is a young man's game, right? And it's like, I don't believe it is. I just think it's a, now it's, if, if hip-hop is going to become or is, if you believe it is the number one news genre in the world, according to that recent poll, that went out a few couple of years ago that confirmed the news but people thought it happened a few you know maybe a few couple of years beforehand but if it is the most popular genre in the world then as it matures or as it grows or as it gets even bigger and it reaches bigger and wider audience it's going to have to adapt or it's going to it's naturally going to appeal to different types of people right different groups of people are going to are going to be drawn to different kind of artists 
So it's up to the artist to make sure that they tap into who's interested in them. Because nowadays you don't need to have the whole world listen to you. You just need a thousand fans. One thousand fans for most artists, again, it's probably important to have your expectations aligned or your ambitions aligned with your current ability and where you are. But for the most part, if you've got a thousand people following you, a thousand people interested in you, a thousand people that would come to a show if you played in a major city, a thousand people that would most likely buy merch, that would download a CD, or download an album, download an EP, buy a song, um, buy a collaboration, watch you on a TV show, blah, 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 blah. You've got a pretty good career. Because if, if, if you're really about the music, if you're really about the artistry, having some people attend and give a shit about you for the rest of your life is better than having a lot of people and then it petering off to nothing. That probably is a, a bigger fault, right? You, won't, you wouldn't want that, which is probably why a lot of artists are very keen to go on tour with bigger artists, not because they want to grab the audience, but because they want to practice, right? Because they know they have the fans, they have their own fans, right? But you want to practice in front of that stage and see what it feels like to do an arena with Post Malone, right? So then when you take it back to your own little 500 capacity stadiums or 500 capacity clubs or whatever it may be, you can take that learning onto that sort of stage. Hopefully we see that happening in hip hop. Again, I hold hope. It probably isn't going to happen because the egos of hip hop are way too large. But, you know, you can only you can only hope. You can only hope. Next on this, what do we have here? Oh, too many L's. Who got the Sakai LDVs round two? Did you anyone get them? I tried. Guess what? L, 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 L dance, L dance, L, 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 L dance. <laughs> I got the L's, L's. Um, but yeah, so too many L's of the Sakai um, Nikes round two. I think I'm going to be controversial here and say I'm, I think I might prefer the second batch of colorways to the first. I know this is crazy to say this, and I think most, most likely than not, if Nike put out one batch before the other, it's because the first batch is better. But I quite like the colors on this, man. I'm not going to lie, man. I'm not going to lie. And they remind me of what an actual LDV from, you know, the archives would actually look like, right? So you've got these two, you've got three pairs actually that came out, right? So the, as you guys are aware, the Nike um, LD, LD Waffle and Sakai, you know, shoe was, you know, probably maybe is the biggest shoe of this year, right? In terms of hype, in terms of just appeal. Not just a hype, in terms of, forget hype. I don't give a shit about resale. I'm not talking about StockX. I'm talking about people wearing them day to day in the street. I've seen more people wear, wear the Sakai LDV, L, LD, LD waffles, sorry, and uh, undercover ones than I have done any other hype shoe. Of course, apart from Yeezys that, you know, they're on public, public, like I said, if you go to Shoreditch, you go to Little Boutique Station, you're always going to see someone wearing a pair of Yeezy 350s, right? Whether it's, whether it's the new ones or the old ones, someone's always got a pair on. But in terms of just like general everyday people, I've seen more people wear these Sakai LD Dub waffles than any other shoe. They're everywhere. And it's a good thing too, because people are actually wearing them day and day. And that's what I love to see. And I guess if you're a designer and you've done a collaboration with Nike, it's all well and good them, you know, selling for a gazillion dollars on StockX. But the main reason why you did it is because you wanna you wanna do you wanna you wanna have people actually wearing them. You wanna be out in the street and see some kid wearing a shoe that you've spent six months or to a year designing, right? Going back and forth with people at fucking at Portland. But I'm a big fan of them. Honestly, I can honestly say that I think I prefer the second batch to the first. I know it's probably sacrilege and the sneaker heads out there burning their fucking Perspex box and throwing all their, you know, stupid, you know, socks in the bin. But honestly, I really, really like this. The, the second batch is amazing. So you've got this black and gray pair, right? Again, the standard, you know, Sakai take on the LD the waffles. Everything sort of like stacked and doubled on top of each other from the midsole to the toe box, to the swoosh, the heel tab, to the lace day, to the tongue. Everything is doubled up, but the black and gray, the black and gray pair are awesome, personally for me, in my opinion. I really like them, right? Then you've got, make sure this is up so you guys can see this one, right? Then you've got, then you've got the gray pair that looks splendid, like zen. It's not even like a, it's not even like a mild gray. It's like a really like it. Hopefully, it's not the camera that's just making them washed out like that. But I really like it. It's sort of like a washed out gray, a little bit lighter than a, a New Balance gray for the most part. And then you've got this beautiful sort of like a biotech maybe not more so i don't know but these these look more like an archive these look like something you might pop into imagine if mom and pop stores still existed these would be the colorways that you'd see archive right like um vintage sorry um stuck in the back in the back cupboard somewhere right the midsole completely yellowed out this is what you'd see oh you know what i'd actually love to stain the pair of the midsoles actually that'd be so cool some people could stain them remember back in the day in crooked times we used to stain the midsole with tea bags the MX lights that Nike fucked up on. 
Hopefully now Nike bring those back out again and the MX Lights and actually put them out the right way or do them the, uh, retro them the right way. There was that stuff about them not having the right tooling for it. It's just come on, man. But anyway, um, I like these, man. I think the second batch for me are the best. Again, I didn't get a pair. They're not going for, again, I'm not talking about hype, but just in terms of resellability because, you know, if you're able, if you're not, if you missed them out, if you missed out on them on the first time around and you've got money, you can purchase them again. I saw them on StockX in my size. I'm a size 11 us for about 300 quid so you know again if you if you really want a pair you can get them i'm pretty sure retail was like 130 anyway so if you don't want to faff around queuing up or you don't want to pay for bots and stuff paying double for a pair of shoes that you're actually going to wear day in day out i'd do it in a heartbeat people spend if that and more on flipping designer trainers that are probably you know 10 times worse than be well 10 times that are disgusting and not that comfortable but these i'm not sure how comfortable these are but you know in general just for the swag I'll get them. I'll be all over them. I'd, I'd literally wear all three pairs. I think the first batch, my favorite color was a reggae color that I call a reggae colorway. I thought those were my favorite colorways and maybe the the, the the kind of navy color. But again, you know, that's cutting at straws. But I honestly have all three of these colorways. They're sort of like green and purple, black and gray, and the gray itself. Like I have every single pair. I'd wear them day in, day out as well. Again, not sure if how my toes will look in them because I'll just see the front of the toe box. Me and my fat toes, I'm not sure how that would hang in there, but I would try my hardest, man. I really would try. But yeah, um, they've gone been and gone, so I'm not gonna tell you where to go get them. But if you want to go get them on resale, they're probably available now on StockX. I'll put the link in the in, in the description for you guys to check them out. But yeah, one of my favorite shoes this year, easily, easily one of my favorite shoes this year. So so fucking good. Um, let's move on. What else we got here? Oh, we got these, right? We got Vivian Westwood Vans yes you heard that right vivian westwood vans very odd collaboration i didn't see this coming i'm pretty sure others didn't see this coming either because no one's got any inside news these days we will just see our stuff from hypebeast and we'll be going to give it back to people like myself uh, thanks for listening but um yeah one odd collaboration um i'm not mad at it i've got to be honest i think they look pretty cool um again i'm not sure how down i am to be wearing like you know gaudy vivian westwood iconography on my stuff i quite like the i quite pref i much prefer the pirate and the tartan stuff because you know there are there is some there is labels there is usually an embroidered little badge in it that you can see but for the most part i like the actual tartan print itself how the material is where it's washed where it's put together i quite like that as opposed to just a, the big fuck off logo on like a jumper or something people do that a lot and wear those i see people wearing them a lot in in the city and stuff for you know nice little cardigans and jumpers and whatever for work but you know it's too much for me but i actually quite like these loafers they're really gaudy they're, they're basically like a van slip on in like a loafer hybrid so you've got the van slip on upper with like a kind of strap that goes to the front and you like a loafer and then you've got the stitching on the toe box which you don't necessarily get on van slip ons and then you've got this super like rugged chunky sort of like dr martin's x saw at the bottom they look really nice padded uh collar it looks like for the most part new box suede they look really, really good. And I'm sure they're going to be everywhere. <laughs> that being said, I'm thinking right now, they're going to be everywhere. Yeah, for sure. Because I've seen it. I did, I've definitely seen an uptake in kids wearing the Dr. Martin's loafers. I forgot what they're called. I should remember. I used to work there. But anyway, um, the black pairs are quite nice. And you've got a blue uh, Vans Authentic, which I'm not really a fan of. Is it Authentic or Era? Era is what's Authentic one without the collar, right? Era is one without the padding. One of them. Anyway. A Vans, no Fox, which I'm a big fan of, no strip on the midsole, upper, blue, with some weird little illustrations on like Thunderbolts and some uh, Vivian Westwood logos all over it, but not bad. Those, I like the checkerboard van slip ons, look fucking banging. What does it say there? S -A, I don't know, it says something on there, but I'm not going to come to find out. But um, yeah, the van slip on check checkerboard print, checkerboard is sort of like tilted with some letters written in between the in between the white boxes with obviously the you know, logo on there then you've got this sort of like what is it a peach cream a cream skate high that looks like a letter this is sort of like a yeah an envelope colorway right a brown envelope colorway with a kind of stamp on the side and it's written on the side where Vivian Westwood store location I'm guessing in London the main store in London they look pretty nice I quite, I quite like that skate high personally I wouldn't wear it but I quite like the colorway this is really nice I like this old school um red again i'm not too i'm not a fan of this sort of like print here this little logo i'm not sure i'm not not really not for me but the red sort of colorway old school orange sole orange yellow laces red upper 
with the kind of same sort of print from the other shoe on there too and then lastly you've got this one this is probably the worst one this is like a pirate boot inspiration but this is terrible black skate high with like a massive brown viva vista belt that goes across it they look horrendous but i'm sure they're gonna be really popular as well they look really really ugly wow that's probably the worst van i've seen in my life again it's not that bad right because it's a black slip one but the black skate high so i'm, I'm sure there's going to be some dumbass kid that's going to try and cut the cut the strap off like why do you cut the strap off like just if you're going to wear a shoe like that it's a black it's a black vans right the colorway is not that rare to get you can get black a pair of all black leather vans i'm sure you can get a pair if not you can always make them on the van site they've got like a little id thing right but i'm sure some kid's going to cut the strap off and wear it like that it's like oh i want i do want the strap it's like come on so you went to buy Vivian Westwood van, but you didn't want the, the thing on it that makes it Vivian Westwood. It's like, but anyway, um, these look really cool. I just saw, I just seen this morning on Hype Beast. They are due to come out when? They are due to come out. There's no date actually set there so far. No date. We don't know. So it's just a it's just a rumor for sure. Price is between eighty three dollars and one hundred fifty three dollars. And yeah, the comments were the same week. Not my style. Not for me. But you know these kids in it did. They don't really represent the buying public out there. And I'm sure if people see Vans and View Westwood, they will be all over them. But yeah, hopefully these come out very, very soon. And I will keep an eye out maybe for the one pair that I like in it. What was that one? The, the, yeah, but both, both, both the slip-ons. The loafer, this loafer here, and the checkerboard are my favorite of the two collections, in case you're wondering. But yeah, that is it. Let's move on. What else is on the list here? What else do we have here? We have this guest and advisory board crystal to launch a planet saving information pop up, which is you know nice to see. It might be a bit corny, might be a bit cheesy, it might be a bit overdone, a bit pretentious, but it's good to see brands, especially streetwear brands, taking some sort of um Resp civic responsibility you know taking ownership of whatever it is that they put out into the environment because you know i think it would be a bit it would be irony at its finest to be a owner of a brand and be you know espousing or you know badgering people about climate change and global warming when you are you know contributing if not more than most people are to the state of the world it is now but it's good to see some of them taking accountability a bit and trying their best to if not educate consumers uh try and drive incentives that are you know again leaning into their political stances because that's that's the worst thing right when you have friends that are like super political or super woke but don't do anything um you know in real life to kind of address the ills that they're complaining about instead they just wait for you to all get high drink a couple of drinks around the dinner table and then decide to like badger you for half an hour about whatever thing they read on fucking reddit the other day it's annoying um but yeah good to see advisory chris advisory board crystals doing the opposite this is a collaboration with guests what does hype you say about it here um they say advisory board crystals is hosting a pop-up shop uh as part of a new project called planet saving information which will support the environmental media association pop-up shop pre-release supported by guest jeans will include 12 hoodies and a zine also printed on the front of the search as the abstract presentations of humanity as a global culture core cool, great to see while the back sports a earth graphic showing the common thread that what connects all people awesome again see nice and wholesome again bit barfy right makes me want to puke in my mouth but i think if you're about that life then why not man and it's good too right because if, if you're my customer advisory board crystals i want to know exactly what they're about right i want i want to have a real good sense of who they are as people and then if i decide to buy into it i decide to buy into it but then you can't complain right they are who they are um last year the the, the brand tapped on the host continue the ucla ios was also brought onto the project as a stresses and measurable change while ema focuses on the distribution of information at the guest variable pop-up event you must purchase a zine in order to receive a hoodie i love that so in the zine there'll be information there'll probably be numbers to contact things to get involved with right local bodies and all that malarkey a portion of the proceeds from the sale will go towards the ema and ucla i love that just nice nicely done um again they, they, they make good merch clothing like there's this new segment of streetwear that's like merchy stuff but they make good stuff to be honest um the hoodies look like they fit really well they might have a custom fit on the hoodies i'm not too sure if it is but i like how they do with the tie dye with the crystals and the kind of you know the kind of like homemade type of feel that goes into it and i'm pretty sure they're a husband or like they're a couple right duo which is awesome too i like that energy um 
you know, female brands. It's weird, isn't it? That female. It's weird that there's a lot of men's fashion brand. There's a lot of men. There's a lot of men who are working in women's fashion to a high level, but there's not a lot of women that work in men's streetwear to a high level, right? And it's it's odd considering the you know there's not much to there's not much to play with. Silhouettes rides is probably harder in fashion, but in streetwear, there's uh, the main staples: what hat, t-shirt, hoodie, jeans, shorts, long sleeve, right? There's not many, and it still can't happen. I don't know what it is, but I like the tension. I like the, I like the the ideas that you get from duos like the boy and girl duo, like Arise, right? I think of Marcus Almeida. I think of you know, ad, advisory board crystals, ABC. Right? I like the, I like it. I think it you get some good results out of it. Like imagine if like Liam McSweeney and um, the dude that does a China market hooked up and decides to make a brand together. That would be awesome. You know, it would look amazing. Liam McSweeney, that dude, it would, look, it would be Mike Sherman, sorry, right? Imagine Louis, Liam McSweeney and Mike Sherman put, made a brand. Imagine how cool that looked. But yeah, I'm a big fan of these guys. I think they do great work. And again, um, credit to them for actually standing up for something, innit? In a world where most people just go around collecting the coins from the kids. So yeah, great hoodie for the most part. Um, like what it looks like. Some great tie-dye pants there collaboration with guests so there'll be loads probably a lot more available than they're able to make themselves they've got a little short little video here about what saved in the ocean and shit let's see what this is about yeah you get a drift right yeah if it doesn't cringe but hey what can you do um support the guys they're doing their thing um the event is from the 12th to the 18th it's in la um guests i'll link the details in the show notes but it's like guest store at 44 411 North Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills. I'm assuming if you're in LA, you'll know what that is. But yeah, big up um, ABC for the collaboration and hope that goes well. Um, what else is on the list here? Oh, we have Stussy sunglasses. You've seen these? Some Stussy um, 90s or 80s inspired sunglasses. Whoever, whoever is the creative director of Stussy at the moment, whoever you are, he or she, you are doing an amazing job. They have been absolutely smashing it as of late. The stuff that I've seen online on their online store, the editorials they put together, it's just super ratings. I don't know. I don't know who pressed the button and decided to go for it again with Stussy, but I'm so ready for it. I think the kids are ready for it. Um, again, it's probably. I think if I was a kid nowadays and had to choose between wearing Stussy, Palace, and Supreme, it'd be Stussy all day long. You know, Palace can go fuck themselves. Supreme, I'm a big fan of, but you know, it's just there's too many kids wearing it. But I'd be all those do. I'd wear that head to toe. I'd wear that head to toe. Honestly, I'd be. I'd be. I'd probably. If I was a kid and I was getting involved in street right now, I'd number one make my own brand. Number two, I'd wear Stussy. Um, I'd wear maybe a rise and a date, Aries or rise. How you pronounce it? Or maybe some of leaks. I'd wear Pata when I'm just hanging around with my boys doing a thing, right? And then um. Yeah, that's it. I'd wear those brands. That'll be it. Yeah, Stussy, Aries or Arise, Pata, and um, what else? What did I say? Anyway, you had the other one. But yeah, I, I love it, man. They do all great stuff. So these glasses that you put together, um, how many glasses they've got? They've got two or three. I think maybe three. They've got the Nico, the Owen, and the Logan for full winter 2019. Again, I'm not sure when you're going to be able to wear glasses now in London or most of the country, most of the world that has actual winter apart from you, LA, Lucky Sodobs. But yeah, they look fucking awesome. I'm a big fan of them. Again, nice wraparound style, you know, with the, the glasses that everyone's sort of wearing nowadays. The, those wraparound ones, in the, I think they're clear. I don't want my favorites, so maybe in the black with the tinted lenses. You got this sort of like wafer stock type of glasses too, and a tortoise shell and a black. And then what else do you have here? You have it come in red too. And what's the last color? Last the last one is sort of like a what would you call that? I'm not sure that it's sort of like a wafer, but about the rims. It's not aviator glasses, but yeah, three really cool distinct shapes. Um, probably this shape is probably my favorite. I'm not sure if that's the Nico. Um, that looks fucking awesome very cholo-esque or very like oakley-esque right it reminds me of that and these sort of like wafer type glasses too look insanely good and i think it's got a logo just the top right hand corner right so just there on the top right hand corner of the lens so not on the side which is annoying i, I think i would have liked to have the script the kind of like the sean stussy uh, tag on the side there in sort of like raised that looks fucking awesome but yeah so far 
so good. I think there's an editorial picture here too from the Instagram that looks amazing. Just just look at that picture. Look how good look how good there. Whoever's doing the photography and the styling of this, it deserves a, a fucking Oscar, man. Look how good that is. That is so good. I want those glasses straight away. That's it. Again, not sure if my head's gonna fit them, whatever, but they look so beautiful. Amazing. Well done to everyone involved, man. Great glasses. Seasonal eye gear available, I think now, right? Or available, yeah, available now. Prone to do see um september 13th it seems like right so that is today so check them out if you're looking for some new shades that you want to wear man um what else have we got here let's move on what, do do? what else we have here to talk oh wish we got these alix boots i was just on a hype piece now alix have been absolutely smashing it with the fucking uh footwear as of late anyway i'm sure so most of you guys are aware um, you know, they've been going from strength to strength ever since they debuted at the Paris Fashion Week a few seasons ago. Um, it's just, you know, I think maybe some investment got pumped into them. Maybe they've just been making loads of money and, and Matthew's just been pumping them back into his brand. But whatever they're doing, they're doing it right. And also like the fact that the, they have a very distinctive um style when it comes to doing footwear, right? Apart from the Nike shoes, which kind of been and gone and they were, you know, essentially more of a, Hmm. I don't know. I, I hadn't really. They didn't really seem like they kind of got people. People didn't really get them. Maybe they were a bit too out of left field in terms of the approach. The kind of strap on thing that hooked onto your shoes, and the Air Force One was a little bit, you know, a little bit boring for the most part. But they they were solid collaborations. I'd wear both of them. They're in my line of you know of buying and my buying habits. But I know for I'd, I'd imagine the kids who kind of were wearing you know off-white jordans to go from that to the elite shoe was probably a bit more, a bit of a jump but the stuff they make for their own brand in line is this is this is it because again it doesn't look like anything else on the market it's very distinctive there's a very um obvious and deliberate um, attention to materials and textures and application you only have to look take one look at matthew williams's story to see the amount of stuff that he's experimenting on when he's in the warehouse and stuff or he's in his, you know, it seems like his favorite place to, to stay. Matthew Williams is even with his family or in in some warehouse somewhere, fucking around or some, you know, some factory somewhere, fucking around the materials. That's really cool to see. I love to see how passionate that dude is about clothing, man. It's fucking awesome. And the fact that he's got his entire family around him doing it, it's just, you know, that's that's the that's the American dream. But yeah, these boots look really cool. Um, all black upper. I'm not sure. There's there's too many materials here to mention. Um, is that Kevlar? pretty sure that's kevlar <laughs> mama mia this guy's insane he made kevlar boots so cool um so yeah they just look amazing they look very again very elite style there's nowhere else you can't mistake in boots like that like fucking sturdy as fuck i love the weird sort of like digi snake camo thing he has going on there too that was i think we saw that featured in the last collection previous collection right in paris fashion week i'm pretty sure we saw that same print featured um but yeah very very cool collaboration or very very cool boots actually with the vibrant soul that he's always fond of. What what's the information? Yeah, to just drop some duo of progressive hiking boots. So I say progressive. Jesus Christ, uh, high beast man. Get some better riders. Um so yeah, these boots come in black, they're gonna be eight thirty and nine thirty respectively, and they're also I are out right now to purchase at Alix. So definitely check them out if you're that way inclined. These boots are so nice. So, such a cool design, man. I love the way they look. Um, again, black up. Oh, you got those nice little lace hoops as well. There, I'm a big fan of. So yeah, massive shoe. Me like, me like, me like. Let's move on. What's next on the list here? Bo, 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 bo. What else do we have here to talk about? Oh, you know what to talk about? That was really interesting. We've got an update on the whole like um Berkine thing that I mentioned to you the other day. So the other day, news erupted on the social web because well, mostly you know. I kind of spotted it earlier on, but I'm always checking. I've mentioned before, right? Every time I'm always checking, kind of like you know the Bergheim location. So, you know, intermittently from here, from time to time on Instagram, right? You can search on places and stuff, and you can you know tell you videos people uploaded, stories people uploaded when they tag the Bergheim there. And it's you know it's a bit irrelevant to do it because the Bergheim has a no photo policy. One of the you know one of the most famous clubs in the world. I'm pretty sure you guys are aware that when you enter, if you do manage to get in after queuing however many minutes you do outside and having to get past the legendary bouncer in one Sven, then when you do finally get in, you'll know that they place a sticker of your phone front and back so you can't really take any pictures. But sometimes 
guys and girls will go in the toilet, take a selfie, or if they're on a dance floor, they might record a little video clip of someone playing. And it's usually just a clip just to say, hey, I was there in purple on social. You don't get that many, to be fair. Um, it, Bergheim pops off for the most part from when? S Sunday morning, for the most part, is the main day to go up until Monday morning. And you don't, you probably will see about 12 videos uploaded from strangers. And that's, you know, that's nothing on Instagram. You know, you probably get about 12 videos posted a second about, you know, a cat someone saw on the road. But I'm always checking it. And I really, and I recognize over the last couple of weeks that I'm seeing a lot more people uploading pictures of themselves coming out of the Bergheim, right? As they usually do, the DJs have that picture where they're standing on the fucking end of the thing, right? Posing with their records, which is so cool. I can't wait to be that guy who does that. But there's also videos of people, you know, with their arm out with a stamp, right? They did get from Bergheim, you usually get a stamp on your arm as you leave so you can come back in and they know, you know, you've been in just showing your stamp. But this time around, they're changing things. I recognize the uptake in wristbands, right? The wristbands you get in the festival that kind of stick, you know, the kind of ones that stick you can't really take take them off. They're quite hard to pull off. And on the wristbands, it's obviously got Bergheim logos all over it, and it's also got the price. But then the second um, adjustment I saw was that they're now um, charging people to re-enter. It's a five euro re-entry fee. Now I'm not sure if that five euro re-entry fee is you pay once to re-enter, and if you go out again, you'd have to pay to come back in again the second time, or if it's every time you leave the five entry. Because maybe it's that. Maybe it's because. You know, there's so many people coming in and out that you know it's causing a bit of you know mischief and a bit of a bottleneck at the front of the of the of the Bergheim because that's the thing. There's only one way to go in. There's loads of exits, fire exits, I'm assuming, but there's not. There's only one entry in, um, so that makes it a bit difficult. And because of that, um, some some dorks online have decided to start a petition to um, boycott the Bergheim because of the price increase, which is you know insane because. It's probably going to be one of the most unsuccessful boycotts you've ever seen in the history of man, right? And I've got the image up here from this is from the Reddit uh, thread, and this is the, this is the protest, right? It's going to start from the 14th, so the Saturday up until the 28th. The people are boycotting, all right? And they're boycotting it because of the price increases. It's like what? Let's go back to the thread. So let me see if I can find where there you go. Yeah, so it's this. Let's see if I can get it on there. The comments. It's insane that this thing's actually happening in real life. <laughs> but yeah, it says uh, people are boycotting for following the changes in prices. And this kind of guy kind of basically eschews my thoughts completely, right? So much so I have to, I have to give him an upvote. But this is basically is where I'm at. So this is the one comment that kind of explains it and kind of, you know, puts it all down. And says, this is fucking ridiculous. So this is a comment from the Reddit thread. It says as follows. People are being so dramatic about this. This is about people wanting to boycott the burnout. The wristbands or another system are going to be forced on all major Berlin clubs soon. With the further implementation of digital control methods, stamps and clickers are no longer acceptable methods of tracking how many people are in a club, which is true. It's a very draconian and very old school way of, you know, tracking the amount of people are in a certain nightclub. You know, you you go and uh, usually there's a guy that's clicking in and out, people coming in and out. And it's a and it's probably a monster job for someone to do to keep that kind of focus. And every year. The Bergheim gets more popular, it gets more well-known, it gets more world recognition. People like me make videos, more people come every year. So imagine the kind of strain they're having to go through. So all that stuff is just unnecessary. The amount of drama that happens with somebody, you know, some idiot decides to jump in the river in the summer with a stamp and then it washes off and they come back and they say they pay. But, it, you know, all that stuff. So it just kind of gets out of the way. So that makes sense. Um, click on no longer acceptable methods of tracking. Printed wristbands provide a more tangible record of occupancy. They need to be printed, probably as a result of this closer record of the occupancy, for, of course, for fire, for fire hazards and stuff. And you have to remember, do you remember when the burger was about to close? They were threatening to close it. So this is not, this is something that they probably have to do. You have to always kind of have this game or this dance that you play with the local authorities, right? You want you want to keep them, so you want to keep in their good graces. You don't want them to kind of completely oust you. Um, blah, blah, blah. Probably as a result of the closer closer record of their occupancy, they're going to start limiting the guest numbers more in order to play by the rules. Just fine. Anyone who frequents the club knows that uh, it needs to happen anyway. It's been absolutely packed recently. It's true. I've seen the uptake. I think the posts I've seen over the summer have been insane. I got so much FOMO with clicking the post on Instagram. People have been uploading pictures of them outside the burger. Obviously, when they finished consistently the entire summer it's been absolutely it looks like it's been brand i see i see i remember seeing a video or a picture of the queue outside the burger and it was stretching all the way back to the taxi rank and even a bit further like so you know and that's far if you've been to burger you know how far that is um 
that's a long queue sorry and they're not like single file queues right it's like friends packed into like groups of five and whatever it may be like um um, lower number of guests means that they need to make um they need to make up for the revenue somehow hence a five euro entry fee which is true anyone who knows us place knows that the intent here is not to malicious and it's a good chance that they'll make the play better which is true it's already hard to get in which it's a it's already in a you know some it's in a random place it's hard to get in it has a really you know tight reputation which will already weeds out all the pretenders all the people that are just going to be there for you know shouting and screaming and acting like a fool and then and on top of that, you've got the added little barrier of the, the little price increase. Then you've got the re-entry fee. It really is for the professionals. If you're really about this life and you really are in love with electronic music and you're, you know, you can't go a day without listening to a techno mix and, you know, you follow releases and you go watch your favorite DJ play and you buy merch, this shouldn't affect you because this in, in general should be make it better because it means that, you know, all the dumb idiots that are usually there are not going to be there and usually for the most part they do a good job of eliminating it i'm not sure how it is generally uh, i tend to avoid going on a friday or a saturday for the most part or friday night you know or saturday morning whatever but um for the most for me i've never had a bad experience there anyway to regard so they can they can charge whatever and i'll still go and it continues uh the club is still the club no one has ever gone because they wanted to experience a stamp on their arm i'm willing to pay more if it means that i have more room to dance and have and the dive to queue 45 minutes for a toilet i agree this went into effect last weekend and the club has much less crowded than it has been in a while yes awesome and there's also been opposition to alternative heavens like bergheim if we want space like bergheim to survive we need to accept that trust support and the club's adaption of the powers that surround them be on Bergheim side, not against it. 100% agree. That's so true. And I think, again, I think it's even more prevalent for the Bergheim because that's the one Berlin establishment or kind of mecca, right? Or the one electronic scene. That the one, yeah, the, the mainstay of the scenes. Every city has one club, right? They have to kind of rally around. So far in London, it seems as if people are running around fold, which is great to see. And I'm hope every, every city does it. So what you have to do, you have to kind of set the precedent with those clubs, make sure those clubs play, the, play by the rules there by the book and everything and then the other clubs can be a little bit you know a little bit loosey-goosey fly off the seat they fly off the seat of their pants but you have to maintain the standards of this kind of club because if not it's going to have a trickle-down effect and affect everybody else underneath them that's that's the problem with this so it's annoying it sucks and stuff i understand but honestly i would i wouldn't rather anything else i really wouldn't want to rather anything else it's so so good um i'm really really a big fan of it and again re-entry fee on a re-entry fee i'm going to be inside of you soon berlin and Bergheim. so i'll see you again very soon um yeah i don't mind it i don't mind i'm not sure what people are complaining about again again i think it's people probably being spoiled i think we had a Bergheim here in london and it was charging 18 pounds to get in to see you know 17 of the world's best djs we wouldn't give a flying toss honestly we wouldn't care at all but i think if you're in berlin you're probably so spoiled with the amount of good places that you got to you, you've got to go and rave at and have a good time at it. You're just like, oh my God, I can't believe they did this. It's like, mate, come on, come on. Anyways, um, what else is on the list here we want to talk about? That's a, I've done quite a lot of topics today, haven't I? I think I've smashed them through and it's already petering out to 50 odd minutes and stuff. So maybe it's a good place to end it. Again, as always, thank you so much for tuning into the Agassino's English show. This might be the last show of the week, actually, um, considering, depending on what happens tomorrow. I'm not DJing tomorrow, which is Friday. But if I do end up DJing, then of course, no show. But if I don't, then I'm going to do another one. But in case you don't see me and it's your first time here, give me a little like, right? A little subscribe if it's your first time and you enjoyed my little rants and raves. If it's your you know if you've been here already then leave me a comment you know let me know if there's a bit in the show that you enjoyed a bit of show that you didn't enjoy if you listen to the podcast app leave me a five star review share amongst your friends with malarkey and i will see you guys again on the other side for the other, for the another episode of the show another episode another episode start right at the end why don't you have a now? um but until next time friends see you again very very soon bye bye peace